So Allison is Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer of Nissan, and she is our Automotive Marketer of the Year. It's crazy heavy. And uh, I have a box for you to take it home in. I don't know if you're going to try to take it through TSA or not, but it could be, it could be an interesting situation. I think we're still not doing that. <laughs> what? I think we're, I don't, all the TSA regulations. So we'll have to, I don't know. Yeah. I'll wing I, it. I wondered about that in, in LA because I sent people home with them and they said they were going to take it as carry on. And I said, <laughs> I would like to see that conversation with you and the TSA officer. That sounds like TikTok content, actually. Right? Yeah. <laughs> totally. Totally. So thank you. Thank you thank for you. joining me and, and for, for, you know, doing what you do and making it easy because you were just such an obvious choice for Marketer of the Year this year. Thank you. No, I, I mean, this was a, it's a huge, it was surprising. And I know we were trying to connect, um, you know, before you were doing the announcement. It was, it's, it was really unexpected. Um, but I think it's, obviously, there, I have an incredible team that I have the privilege of working with. And so this is, this is definitely a team event because it, it takes a village to do something. And I think for us, we've been on a two-year journey of really trying to transform the brand. And you and I actually spoke three years ago for the first time when I just started my role. And I think it was, um, I think about that time, everything that has happened since then, which has not been insignificant, and then I think about where we are and I think about the progress that we're making. And again, kind of as a team, I'm, I'm proud of the work that we've been doing and I'm proud of the work that, of the transformation that this is contributing to for Nissan as a brand. Yeah, I remember it very distinctly. We met, we met here three years ago, yep. uh, pre-pandemic world, so <laughs> completely, completely different world. We, uh, I had just moved back from Japan. I, I'm not even sure I knew where I was because of the jet lag, but... Yeah, well, you seemed fine. You seemed very <laughs> coherent. In fact, I remember, well, I, I, I had a feeling even then, because I, I, we went to the, your agency and you, you gave a presentation there and they were doing kind of a, a female empowerment day and, and some of the stuff you said was just so honest and raw and frank and just gave me, I'm getting chills thinking about it because it was just like what every woman in the business needs to hear. You know, it's like, you're at the table for a reason, let your voice be heard, don't be a shrinking violet, and you have, you're at the table for a reason to, to give your ideas, and that you should, you should trust your gut. You know, trusting your gut has been sort of your MO, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I, you, you know, there's, and obviously there's been, you know, I have, I have years of experience that have gone, you know, into that. I've been agency side for other manufacturers. My whole career has been in automotive, um, and I've seen so many different sides of the business. I've seen things in very, very strong times. I've seen things in the middle of the financial crisis. I think I've seen things in, in the middle of, of controversies and things like that. And so I, I feel like I bring, you know, a strong experience and then I, and then my gut that comes, that has been developed from that actually. Well, like I said, giving you the, the marker of the year was, was really a no brainer and, and, you know, after looking at your campaigns for the past year and your sales numbers, you know, the Versa, Sentra, Leaf, Kicks, Rogue, and Frontier all had more than 25% sales growth year over year, which is incredible. And I think the uh, Kicks had its best ever calendar year since its launch in 2018. Yeah. So that says a lot too. So, you know, how much do you think is due to your, your product transformation and, and how much do you think can be attributed to marketing? Of course, we all want to say it's all marketing because marketing <laughs> is the most important thing in the world, but you guys have a whole new product lineup. So. Yes. I, yeah, and I was, just, I was just talking with Alfonso Albaiza, who's our um, head of design for Nissan, and <laughs> we were talking about in the last 20 months, we have either completely refreshed, minor refreshed, every single model in our portfolio and I think that is massive. So I think product, obviously, we sell product. That's what consumers buy. Um, and so product has, obviously, it plays a very, very crucial role to that. You know, our role on the marketing side is how do we actually bring that to consumers in a way that's relevant and impactful for them? And so I think the two of them work together. And, you know, and I talk with, you know, my, my colleagues on the product side, and, and we talk about it all the time. It's like we are in a place now at Nissan where we have 
great product, and we're bringing it to, mar to market with great marketing. And I think it's the combination of those two things. Well, that's a great setup for the first video that we're actually going to watch. So I'm going to ask our video folks to roll the video. Remember when driving was fun? Driving used to be an act of freedom, inspiration. Cars were our sanctuaries and co-conspirators. We had posters on our bedroom walls and toy tracks running down our stairs. But somewhere along the line, cars just got boring. You deserve a car that thrills you. A car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. Like hot yellow sports cars with three pedals. Pickup trucks that can take you places you never knew existed. Colorful crossovers. Electric cars that have driven billions of emission-free miles far out. And cars loaded with technology. You deserve a car that gives you something back when you hit the pedal. And there's a car company that believes that too. One that has been delivering thrills at every turn for over 80 years. This is the new Nissan. That was a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's every vehicle, right? Yes. So yeah. how, how did you make that spot? That must have been so intense. It, yeah, it was, that was definitely intense. I think it started, we did a lot of brand work at the very, very beginning of 2020. This was, was pre-COVID. Um, and we really sat down and we knew that we had all these incredible products. And, and I was in Japan for two years before I took this role. And so I, I had, you know, kind of first eyes on some of this. Um, and so I knew that we had all of this that was coming. I knew we were coming out of a period where there was a lot of confusion about who Nissan is, what we stood for. Um, there was a lot of noise. And what we wanted to do, and it was a cross-functional team, literally every single function. We had manufacturing, R&D, design, finance, purchasing, sales. We had dealers in the room. We all sat down and had a two-day session at, at Nissan Stadium in Tennessee. And we just talked about, like, who we are on our best day. And we talked about the conventions that were going on in automotive, and that's where we landed on, we want to thrill consumers at every turn. That is what we want to deliver on. And then we spent a lot of work kind of going, you know, function by function. And change management is hard, um, but we put in the work for it. And we got this, this idea of how does every single function in the company thrill consumers at every turn. And you know, kind of, and then we and then we launched Rogue, and then we started. We knew that we wanted to take a very brand first approach in 2021, and this was was the output of all of that work. When you have 60 seconds, it's a lot easier to work with that. Um, but we wanted to talk about the convention about you know along you know along the way we've kind of started to lose the love of driving and. You know, we've lost some of that. We have amazing technology, and you were talking about it earlier. Um, but that's technology that enables and empowers. There is still this love of driving. And that you can still love driving with autonomous functionality. You can still love driving with electrification. I mean, hello, the torque is outstanding. And so we wanted to make sure that we, that we, we kept that. And I think as a company, we, we talked about who we are on our best day. And when you think about Nissan, when you think about GTR, Xterra, Z, that's who we are. It's not this noise. And it was very cathartic for us to all sit there in the room and get our mojo back as a brand. And that is the result on the marketing side. And then you're seeing that across all of our different functions, you know, whether it's finance or purchasing R&D, um, it just started to filter throughout the entire organization. That's part of Nissan Next, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. I've read that report quite quite Correct. often, so you refer back to it a lot. Yes. So Brie, we have to talk about Brie yeah. Larson. <laughs> she seems like she loves to drive. Like She's amazing. She seems like an actual, you know, advocate for driving. Yes, very much so. And I remember we first started working with Brie in um, with our Centra ad, which actually it launched in March of 2020. A couple of things happened in that period. Um, and so we ended up having to take that off air because it wasn't the time to actually try to launch a car. I mean, we had dealerships that were closed. People were in you know very restrictive lockdowns. And so um, we ended up bringing it back to air. But what was really interesting about the process with Bree is that 
we had, the, I saw the concept and I, you know, it was about this coach, you know, kind of having this moment with someone that was kind of debating something. It was losing a little bit of confidence. And um, we wanted someone that could be very empowering, this empowering coach. And, and Brie was the first person that came to mind. Amazing actress. She has just incredible work, Oscar winner, um, you know, and Captain Marvel. And, and then she also is, you know, she's also very much a proponent of inclusivity and what that means. And so, I, you know, we, we knew that we wanted to work with her. She wanted to interview us, which I just thought was fascinating. And usually it's kind of like, give me the paycheck, um, you know, I'll, I'll be in it. She, she wanted to understand us as a brand. She wanted to understand what we stood for, where we were going. And so, you know, I got on a call with her and I think we talked for like an hour. And it was just this, you know, it's, you know, us, me kind of explaining where we were, what we were trying to do. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't hiding anything. She was doing the same thing on her end and it just, it ended up into, you know, just a great, it was the beginning of a great working relationship, which is why we've extended, you know, our partnership with her, you know, over three years. She absolutely loves driving. And I think she just announced over the weekend that she, she was, she's now gonna be starring in Fast and Furious 10. And it came out of an interview that she did, you know, when we were doing media interviews for Super Bowl. And there, cause she's in, you know, she's in all these spots. She's great, she's an amazing driver. Um, and she just said, you know, someone asked her, are you, have you, you know, have you done Fast and Furious? She's like, no, but if anyone wants me in it, I'm, give me a call. And they did. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> that's awesome. So I you mean, guys that takes guts. I mean, let's be honest. Helped her to get a good job. I know. <laughs> so that's a win-win, right? So your dealer advertising has, has really changed a lot. And I think yes. the dealers like Brie too, don't yes. they? Yes, very much so. And I, yeah, I, that's actually, that's some of the work that, I'm also the most proud of because I think retail work. Let's be honest; it's it's pretty it's pretty cookie cutter, um, and I think it, it's lost it, it's lost the ability to say something, you know, over the years, especially as as you know, kind of the need to push the price and push the deal. I think that that's that's really that's been something that as an industry, I think we we've kind of created that that beast, and I think what we were talking about internally about how do we thrill consumers. It was, we don't thrill consumers by yelling at them. We need to convince them. We need to explain why they need to be considering us as the brand. And it, and it can't be price. And that was very important for us as a brand. And we worked very, very closely with our dealer marketing subcommittee. And, you know, everything goes through, you know, we, and it's not like, it's this collaboration process. It's not like this, you know, okay, well, we need to get the dealer buy-off. It's actually a very, very collaborative process with them. We talk to them about Brie. We talk to them about, we want to change and take a more branded approach to retail. And I think if we would have done that a few years ago, they would have been like, you know, get out of this room. Um, and I think they were already open to it. They already knew that we had the product coming. They were actually pushing us in certain respects. And so I think the, the thinking was already there. We came with, you know, data and, and why this approach would work. And then they, we just gave them some ideas about how we could do this. And then we just started to collaborate on it. And, and that's how we got there. And I think I'm, I'm very, very proud of us as a team for kind of pushing against the convention of what's been going on and doing something that's going to not only be good for the brand and help Nissan stand out, but is also going to deliver results for the dealers. Well, and I think the dealers have shown that it doesn't have to be cookie cutter. No. You know, you can, you can definitely get out of that pattern and do some really creative yeah. and, and effective advertising. Yeah, exactly. And we just, we got our, you know, new... It's, it's difficult. Marketing is, it, marketing is hard because you're putting something out there and everyone is going to have an opinion. Everyone thinks that they can do it themselves. <laughs> and, you know, and it can be very polarizing. And, and I think what we've done over the last three years, and we just got our NADA, you know, kind of dealer attitude survey scores back. We've gone from number 24 when I started my role um, three years ago to now we're number six in the industry. We're number one in creative effectiveness. And I think a lot of that is because we've done this in collaboration with our dealers. We do a lot of consumer research. Um, and I think we push to get, we, we very much work to push against the conventions. Well, and you have another new ambassador besides Bree. Uh, so we're gonna show, watch a video and then talk about him. So I'm gonna ask our AV guys to go ahead and run it. Something's missing, right? I mean, what's a commercial without music? Or 
a movie or a long drive or well anything music drives everything we do when you hear the riff of an electric guitar or a smooth bass line or a powerful beat on the drums that rock and roll energy is often inspired by unsung legends and black music and today's artists are honoring their legacy with an electrifying new sound but it often goes unheard that changes today. Nissan's continuing their commitment to support black music. They're hiring black artists to create original music with all the royalties and recognition they deserve. I know it's really early, so we didn't turn that up really loud, but I really <laughs> suggest when you leave here, if it's like the middle of the afternoon, go watch it again and turn it up as loud as you can, because it's it's, the music <laughs> yeah. is fantastic. Thank you, thanks. So tell us about Jay. How did that? Yeah. Really so yeah. Happen? So Jay, Jay Ellis. Ellis. Yeah. Jay Ellis. Um, if you're not familiar with him, he is. He starred in Insecure on HBO. He's been in a lot of movies. I, he's getting ready. They're getting ready to launch the remake. Or it's not a remake. It's, it's basically kind of the next chapter of Top Gun. And so he's in Top Gun. That will launch over Memorial Weekend. And I think we started to kind of look at we last year. We were already on this road from a brand standpoint, and we wanted to make sure that that lived across all of our tier one work, all of our product launch work, you know, all of our retail work, and all of our multicultural work. And I think, you know, and I think, you know, another convention was okay. Well, just you know, you do some some targeted marketing, and then that's what counts as multicultural. And that's not it. It's not it. It is. There is some very cultural nuances and insights that go into that. And it's very important that we need to tap into that. And how do we talk to these communities? And actually, it's not talk to, it's how do we have conversations with these communities um, and explain you know, why Nissan is relevant for them? How are those experiences gonna be different? And you know, I, again, it goes back to, we don't wanna talk at people. We wanna make sure that we're having conversations with them. And um, through that process, and, and there's, there's been so much work that has been going on behind the scenes, we also wanted to make sure that, you know, representation, you know, we were already working on that in front of the camera, behind the camera, but we wanted to have, you know, somebody that represented and someone that could be a voice, you know, to the African American community that they would respond well to. And somebody that, that felt kind of culturally relevant, but also genuine. And, and that's where we came across Jay. And I think, you know, he's beloved in the show Insecure. And if you haven't seen it, I mean, he has a character that is very polarizing, um, but also very lovable. And I think very similar to what happened with Bree, you know, he wanted to also have a conversation with us and make sure that we weren't, you know, this wasn't just kind of lip service, that this was something that we actually believed as a company. We have a very strong multicultural base as a brand, and we knew that we wanted to, to have a, somebody that they, could, that they could see themselves in that person. And, and that for us was Jay, and he's just, he's absolutely incredible to work with, and you'll see him in, in upcoming work as well. That was my next question. Yes. Are we going to see Jay and Brie together, maybe? Oh, I feel like you might have been in one of my creator reviews the other day. <laughs> I, can't, I can't commit to anything, but I, yes, we would, love, uh, we would love to have them together. And they would love to work together. Yeah, I think they would play, play yes. well off of each other. Yes. So you, you've already had an insane year. I can't believe it's, it's only three months in and, and all the work you guys have come out with. And, and uh, of course, we have to talk about Super Bowl because yeah, that little thing, yes, that little tiny thing, little Super thing. Bowl. So, why don't we go ahead and watch the spot and then we can talk about it? Nice ride. Want to give it a spin? Coffee's enough excitement for me. <laughs> Come on, very nice, Catherine. What the? Hey, hey. <laughs> Eugene Levy? Huh. Eugene. Where is he? Where are you? I'll be there in two seconds. Well, cock a doodle do. <laughs> Send him. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Watch the coffee. I'll drive. 
Shotgun. First of all, we don't have our phones, so is every is everything okay? Okay. Okay. I'm like, that's not part of the spot. I've watched this spot a thousand times. There's no weird noise at the beginning of the spot. So let's talk about this. <laughs> let's talk about this. <laughs> the, the wig. We have to talk about the wig. Oh, Derek. He, this was Eugene Levy is just amazing. He named that character Derek. He names every character, and that look was Derek. And to see him transform, and I, I actually, I, I, I saved, I, these are some of the artifacts that I saved, but when they were sending through wardrobe and things, when they're doing kind of the wardrobe test, I, I saved it because I'm just like, ah, this is going to work. <laughs> this is actually really funny to see him in that. He loved it. He absolutely loved it. But he named it Derek. Okay, so. Um, he, the Schitt's Creek characters are just so, I mean, they're, they still resonate with people because I think... People just love that show. Yeah. So how did you hit on using the two of them together? Yeah, and I think, I mean, I think starting first with kind of what the idea is, the idea around the spot was we wanted to show a transformation and how getting into a Nissan product can transform you and it can give you this thrill. And so we were looking at a few different options um, for who could embody that. And and Eugene's name was on the list, and I think we were we were having a lot of discussions as a team. And it to me it was it was very obvious he he could deliver that type of transformation. He is beloved. He's absolutely beloved. Um, and so and so and then <laughs> and Catherine is equally as beloved. And the two of them together, we just thought it you know Schitt's Creek. Everyone loves that show, and it was the show that you know it's. It just is this feel good. It's a great family story. It's a great story that I think everyone can relate to, regardless of what your experiences have been. And the two of them together just play so well. And so we we just we loved the idea of getting them together. We thought you know people would be very excited to see that. And then it all then it all just kind of to fall. It started to fall into place. Well, that show sort of saved us. You know, it was during the pandemic when things were really dark, and I don't know. I started watching. I, I binged it. I binged the whole series during the early days. Yeah, it was early. I remember it very well. So, you know, Super Bowl is—is is it worth the price of admission to you guys? I mean, obviously it was. So, are you? Would you going to keep doing it every year, or is it a year by year thing? Yeah, I mean, I think to me, it's Super Bowl is a very considered investment, obviously. And I think if you're going to do it, you have to have the right type of story. You need to have the right type of, of product lineup. And you need to be in a place as an organization where you can go Super Bowl and really go Super Bowl. And I think that's not always easy to do for us. And I think this it's it varies by brand. For us, it's something that is not going to be a given. It's going to be something that we do at certain points in time because we feel like it is a way to really stimulate a brand story or a product story. But I, to me, and, and what we, and I think in, in the numbers proved it for us, is that when you go in, and you go in with the purpose of knowing what that audience wants, and you have the product and the brand story to really deliver it, it performs very, very well. And we saw you know, just incredible lifts when it comes to how consumers were searching about our brands, and it was all of the brands. Um, it was, you know, about likability. People were entertained. You know, we saw, like, the number of views, I think, was just, it just kind of blew, blew, it blew us out of the room when we started to see it. And, uh, you know, you have a billion impressions, and that's not, and that, that, a lot of that isn't paid, actually. And so I think for us, it worked for us this year. We will evaluate it, you know, each year to ter determine if it's going to be part of our arsenal. Well, you're not going to continue to have, like, 10 new products in one year either, right? That's yeah, exactly. not going to keep happening year Right, exactly. Year. So, so what is next for this year? So this year, uh, we have a very exciting year coming up. We are going to continue running a brand campaign. We started this last year where we had, you know, we ran a full year brand campaign, and we had four different stories to it um, that kind of touch touched on and really complemented some of the product launches that we had. This year, we're going to continue to do the same. We're doing that now. We launched this during the final four. Um, we have the Aria launch. Um, so very, very excited for this all-electric um, crossover to come into market. We have I don't know if you've heard of the Z, but the Z is also launching. So we're going to be supporting that. Um, we're going to continue to talk about our electrification, our, you know, our 
you know, capability and our history in electrification. And we're also gonna talk about our performance and capability, and that's across our entire lineup. Well, the Z is iconic. If, yes. if anybody in the room hasn't heard of the Z, then that's, go go Google Nissan Z, because yeah. you need to know about the Nissan Z. Yes, yes. That's so kind of cool to be, to re, be re, relaunching it, it's, right? I mean, it's, it's such an iconic product for us, and I think it's my personal experience with the Z, and I think what's really, what I love about Nissan is that everyone has these personal stories about the brand. A lot of them go to Z, and I, the Z was actually something, it was a model that my older brother was obsessed with, and he had a couple of 240Zs, and then he had a 300Z, and by the time I was you know, able to drive, he had a 300Z, it was pearl white, red interior, T-tops, it was 90s AF. And I, it's how I learned, I, ha I learned how to drive a stick on that car. And this car is so beloved that it's been passed around in my family, my nephew has it now, my dad had it for a, a time period because he loved it and it gave him kind of that mojo. Um, and so it's just this beloved car and then when I was in Japan, I was, you know, sometimes I would go to our, our technical center, which was where the design studio is, and I would just kind of like poke around a little bit, see like what the designers are working on, and Alfonso was like, come back here, let me, let me show you something. And he pulls the sheet off of it, it had, you know, no one even knew that, that, he was, that we were working on it at the time, and then my jaw just dropped. And it was, you know, kind of this, this early clay model of it, and I was like, oh my God, this is, insane and it's very very much you know what you're what were is you know kind of the production model as well and i just remember at that time and it was you know kind of 2018 we had a we were in the press a little bit um and it was just exciting to see that in all of that noise and all of that chaos that this was actually what we were working on as a team and this is what we were going to be able to deliver as a company and so i think it's such you know it's such an honor that we're gonna continue that legacy. And it's just, I mean, it's just, it's a joy to work on. I didn't learn how to drive a stick on that car. It was like the car, that was the car I got after I, as a press car. And I had learned how to drive a stick on another poor car um, that I abused. But I got, I actually knew what I was doing when I got that. And it was very distinctive, the, yeah. the memories of driving that. Like you said, it was, yeah. it was very 90s. Yeah, exactly. Very 90s, but wonderful. Yeah. So I, I wish more people would learn how to drive a stick. Yeah. I feel, yeah, it's kind of like, it, it feels like it's, it's gone out of fashion. And, you know, to a certain extent, you understand. Um, but, and that's why I think it's so unique and why, why we've been touching on it in, um, you know, in a lot of our, our brand work is, is highlighting that because it, it is very much true to the Z. It's true to that segment. Um, and it is a differentiator. So I want to get a little personal since you're our marketer of the year. And it's not just about the vehicles. It's about you. Um, we were talking about TV shows, and I, I just recently read a headline about you that a few years ago, um, you, you like to be called the mother of dragons. <laughs> so that's kind of an interesting title. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that at the time, and I think we, so I was the director of marketing uh, for Infinity a few years ago, and Shelly Pratt is here, and she is the director of marketing now, and she, we work together. Um, I... I'm obsessed with Game of Thrones. I absolutely love that show. I just, I just think everything about it, you, you learn everything you need to know about corporate culture in Game of Thrones. <laughs> I mean, it's all there. It's Westeros, and then you have, you know, the other markets that are coming in. It's the whole thing. It's, you know, it, it's everything you need to know about corporate culture. Um, I, think, I think even in that interview, I said, you don't need to go to business school. You just watch the show, and you get what you need. You still need to go to school, but... Um, but what I really loved about it is that I loved the I loved Khaleesi. She got a little sideways at the end, um, but I loved her. I loved this empowering character. I love that she was coming from this family. She was trying to to give a different view of her name, um, and and give a different view. And so I just I really loved everything about her. And I loved the scene where she's kind of coming out of this. She survives a fire, and she has dragons on her shoulders. And I think when I was at Infinity, we had a dress your director day, and my team knew that <laughs> that I loved Game of Thrones. And so I go in, and, and this is why the marketing team is just like the best, I think, in the entire world, is that I go in, and the team had put up like mood boards, they had hair and makeup there, they had wardrobe options, they had made a pair of shoes 
that they hand glued little cocktail swords on. Um, <laughs> they had they had kind of dragons, and I and they made a, a game. They had, they made the Iron Throne, and they had taken you know kind of like an outdoor patio, one of those plastic outdoor patio chairs, and had hand sewn plastic swords on it, and it sat in my office. And I, I took a picture and posted it on Instagram, and it just you know it it, it what what it makes me think of is it's just the creativity of people and just how you can, and it's, you know, it's like they knew that I love this and they made this amazing thing and they put so much love and care into it and it meant so much to me. Um, and so, and so that, that's how the kind of that question came about, but it was, it, it was an Instagram post. Um, but it's like, it, it meant, that chair meant so much to me because they just put so much work into it. And I have the shoes on display in my house because they are works of art. <laughs> It's really cool. You saved them. They're they're there. <laughs> I did. But yes. See. Yes. So, so if you know you, we were talking about learning how to drive a stick. So you you've kind of grew up in a car family, right? Yes. And yeah. and your dad was very empowering to you and encouraging you. And I think you used to count headlights on on Porsches. Was I that did? Your thing? Yes, I did. I we had I am I have a twin brother, and so we had a family station wagon, and they would put us in the back. I don't know how safety whatever was different at the time, I guess, but we would look at the back windshield, and I was just fascinated by the headlights, and it was specifically of a Porsche 911, and I just was fascinated as a child with how you can shape sheet metal like that. And I grew up in Springfield, Missouri. There weren't a ton of Porsche 911s. And so whenever I would see one, I would, I would count it. And I would kind of keep a little mental tally. And we would go on family road trips, and I would, I would count them. It drove my parents crazy. Um, and in hindsight, you're just like, oh, yeah, I probably should have been a car designer. But um, yeah, it, I, it, was, it came out of that. I was just fascinated by the design. I, I just, it was, to me, this, the childlike fascination of somebody can take sheet metal and shape these beautiful objects. And now, I don't know, 10 years later, here you are, right? So. <laughs> it's been, a, yeah, a little bit more since I was staring at the, 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 st the station wagon, but yeah, and I think, and that's why, you know, I, that's why I work, I, I, t I, I like to spend time with the design team, and Alfonso and I have known each other for years, and he's a mentor of mine. Um, but just, you know, I, I just love to know what those insights are, what, what inspired them, because I think we can take all of that into what we do, you know, as a marketing team. That was actually my next question is, where do you get your inspiration from? Right. I, I mean, it's, you know, for us as a, on the marketing side, it, it, it comes from the product. Um, it, it comes from, you know, what, what can we do with that? I think we just get so excited by it. It comes from how are consumers going to use it? You know, what are they going to need? What are, how are they going to, how are they going to take this around? How are they going to use that service? And even when you think about like when we're developing apps and things like that, it's like, how are consumers actually going to be engaging with this? That inspires me. And then I pull inspiration just from everything around me. It's, if it's architecture, fashion, sports, it just can kind of come from anywhere. And so I think it's, you know, and Alfonso and I were talking about this earlier. It just, it comes from, from everyone. So it's, I, I, guess I, I guess to answer your question, I, I try to be inspired by any, anything and everything. Well, sports, I, I was gonna talk about this, but you just said sports. So <laughs> you, you've, you've gotta talk a little bit about your, your March Madness yes. <laughs> um, mascots, because I just think having a cast full of mascots must have been really fun to work with. Yes. It, it was so much fun, and I think it, it's, so it came with, we've been, you know, we've been doing the Nissan Heisman House for college football. We've been doing that for over 10 years now, and through that process, we have a relationship with, you know, a number of schools where we're able to use its IP mascots. We can use their jerseys, the name, everything, um, and so through Heisman House, we started to work with the mascots, and what we found was that actually the fans love the mascots. They absolutely love it because they give you these kind of moments of humor. And, you know, you'll see it in, in Twitter. You'll see it kind of everywhere. But the fans really love it. And so what we thought for March Madness is that we want to create a very similar long-term creative platform that can that is going to be – that consumers will be familiar with Nissan for. So we developed this road to, and it's kind of this hypothetical road to the Final Four that where anything can happen. And – we, do, we don't, there isn't anything like the Heisman Trophy. 
you know, in, for basketball necessarily, but we did know that we wanted to, we're sponsoring both the men's and the women's tournament. So we knew that we wanted to make sure that we had talent that could work across both men's and women's. And so that's how we landed on the mascots. And then I remember the first time that, you know, I saw some of the creative concepts. I saw <laughs> you have a fuzzy hand shifting a gear shift. And I just thought that, now that's funny. And then I just thought about all these, like just getting them, getting the mascots into the cars. I mean, that's a full feat. Um, that is not easy. It, it also like, when, these are college athletes. They're considered college athletes. When they put the costume on, they are in character. And they do not break character. They're not allowed to break character. And we shoot for hours. And so they are like dancing around. They're shooting water guns and stuff. They're joking. They're driving, not talking at all. But they are constantly in character. And so you'll have the director that will be trying to give direction. And like they're shooting a water gun at him. And this is just what they do. And so we just thought, you know, college is such a beloved thing. It's, you know, you have this you have this draw into, you know, where you went to school. I know you went to Michigan State. And so, you know, it's like, that's where your love oh, is. Oh, green. <laughs> and so we, we wanted to just tap into that love because that's part of, that's part of March Madness. And I was a little bummed that Sparty didn't make an appearance, but I don't know what is up with Michigan State. I, they're very weird about letting Sparty do stuff. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I think, again, we have kind of a relationship with a select, you know, with right. a few of them, and that right. isn't one of the schools. Right. But what was fascinating about that is that we, you know, we get these number of, of mascots, and then you don't know who's going to make the tournament. And so then you're just kind of, you're, we're able to guide what the creative can run to the different games. And so we're constantly adapting, we call it this kind of menu. So we're constantly adapting the menu as, as the tournament continues. And I think, you know, fortunately, you know, we made some good choices. Um, but I think we made the choices based on the creative first and foremost and what would give those funny moments. Yeah, that's tough as far as your planning your media goes because you it, there were so many upsets early and it was like I'm sure your media people were real thrilled. <laughs> yeah, and I think the good thing is that we're trying to get kind of a good breadth of it, um, and then it's yeah it's a little bit it's you know a lot of preparation and, and a fair amount of luck as well. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that campaign later with your agency folks who also won an award yes. for for all the great work that they've done. Yeah, and they he, I mean they it's. I think the agency team and, and my team in Nashville, I think they they deserve all the credit because I think they are they are just nonstop with ideas. They're nonstop with just really trying to push. And so it's it's amazing to see the agency be recognized because I think this has been done very much in partnership with them. Well, this is my last question, so you all can put your thinking caps on because Lisa's going to be going around with a microphone if you want to ask Allison your own questions in a few minutes. But, you know, given what we talked about earlier, I just, I just wondered if you had any advice for someone in the trenches at a lower level OEM marketing job or at an agency, you know, for women in particular as far as how to, how to approach their career and how to get ahead and how to stay sane. <laughs> yeah. Um. I, I think to me, I, the biggest thing is do not feel constrained by job descriptions. Um, you know, don't, don't look at that. Everyone has to do the job description, but don't feel, that you're don't feel that you have to be constrained to that. If you have an idea, put it forward. You need to find ways to be influential in how you do that. Um, but keep bringing ideas. Keep showing ways that you're thinking about the business, delivering value for the business. And it starts to come with it. Be curious, you know, all those things. But but really, just kind of, just keep at it. Just keep at it. And I think it. I, I think it has, you know, it it has gotten easier for women. I think this is a difficult industry for everyone. Um, and I think it's it's so fast paced. There's so many facets to it. I think it's 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 difficult. It's challenging. It's amazing for everyone. And so the beauty of what's happening now is that there are more seats, you know, there, are, there is a, a, diverse, a more diverse group of people at the table, which is more representative of who our consumers are, and that creates so much opportunity. And what I realized, too, is that I think along the way, like, ask for help. There are people that are there to help you. That is what actually what helps you stay sane. You know, I have had so many supportive men of my career um, and that's actually been what has, you know, kind of what's, what's really helped me is that 
you know, when somebody sees something in someone and they, they cultivate that and they help nurture that and they help that grow, that to me is what's very helpful. And then when you're in that position to do that in return, do that in return, pay it, pay it forward. Awesome, great advice. So we're gonna let Lisa go ahead. Hey, and, so and does anyone uh, have a question I can pass along the mic to? Lisa usually has a question or two. I actually do, but I'll let them go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashley Hamilton with Ad Media. Uh, my question is, according to some members of your team, Believe has had more limited success than originally project projected. Do you plan on continuing to market it as part of your new fleet of EV vehicles, or are you gonna shift focus away into the newer models? Um, I, Leaf is a beloved model for us, and actually that data is probably a little bit old. Um, what we've been seeing, especially since last summer, is we've seen a lot more interest in Leaf, and especially over the last few months as gas prices have gotten higher and higher. We actually have an always-on strategy when it comes to Leaf, and I think we're looking for EV and tenders, we're looking for uh, you know, consumers that are interested within that segment. Leaf is an amazing model for us, and it's not we are not gonna pull back support of it. And we've actually only seen interest in it grow over the last six months. Yeah, with the gas prices up in, I was just in LA, it was like $6 a gallon. Yeah, and, and Leaf, yeah, and I think it's, and even coming out of, and we've been running an electrification campaign, and Leaf actually, was what, you know, there was a lot of interest that was driven on LEAF from Super Bowl, which is what we were able to see in the data. Hey, Ryan Iwanoff, uh, Samsung Ads. Um, congrats on all the recent success. Uh, I guess I just want to get your view on brand loyalty, um, seeing as though the last couple of years, um, so many electric cars entering the space, uh, lack of cars to sell on dealership lots. A lot of people have been looking elsewhere so I guess I would love to know what you guys are thinking ahead to keep your consumers um, coming back. Yeah, and I, I think um, that's a great question. And I think, and I think you know, brand loyalty is something that you know, we're, we're all struggling with, especially as more and more startup brands kind of come into the marketplace. I think for us, product obviously is a big driver of that. And I think we, were, we did have a bit of a product drought a few years ago. And I think our product transformation and, and Nissan Next and launching you know, 20 refresh or all new models or launching so all of refresh or or, um, or brand new models in 20 months that's part of that i think when it comes to how do we stay them how do we keep people in the brand there are a lot of efforts especially in the consumer experience space so how can we delivering that you know not just at the time of purchase but how can we also be delivering that over the you know kind of the lifetime value of that car with that consumer so brand loyalty is very important to us I think product is is really kind of the catalyst for it, and then it's how do we on the marketing team, how do we keep that going? And so, and it's it's a cross-functional effort. We work very closely with our after sales team as well as our captive finance arm as well. Hi, Allison. Um, Tyreek, this is loud. <laughs> Tyreek with uh, What's Next Reviews. Tyreek with What's Next Reviews, and um, my question to you is, and over time, um, we've seen the brand um, go from, w say with like the Maxima, for instance, um, it shares the same platform with like the Q50. How do you uh, plan in the next um, couple of years of differentiating the product from the Nissan lineup to the um, Infinity lineup of the brand? Yeah, and I think it's, I, and part of that is we actually have two very distinct, you know, kind of organizations for that. I think it's led at a, it's led at a regional level, but we have a separate product team and we also have a separate brand team for those. On the manufacturing side, obviously, you know, we're all trying, as manufacturers, we're all trying to find the most efficient way for us to produce cars. And so that is where, that's the, you know, so the result of that is going to be common platforms. I think that, you know, the platforms are one piece of it. But then the actual design elements around that, and again, there's a separate you know, lead for design. Um, that's part of it. And then also there's a completely separate go-to-market team that delivers on that. And so I think for us, Infinity is an absolutely amazing brand. It is separate from Nissan. So you can have common platforms, and that there's a benefit of that to consumers when it comes to the cost of the cars. 
Um, but it is a separate brand. It is run as a completely separate organization at a brand level and at a product level. And we are gonna talk to Shelly later so we yeah. can ask her about that as well. And I think we are good to go, everyone. So Tanya, Allison, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys thank for, you. for the questions and Allison will be able to take a few after. Thank you.